Here we are to discuss Real Housewives of New Jersey Season 13, Episode 3 Recap. First, we're going to start with some gossip that really pissed everyone off this week. <laughs> Joe Gorga goes to the Bahamas on some weird, like, law group gathering or something. I'll show you in a minute. And then, um, you know, we get a bunch of Melissa Gorga bikini shots, which of course the paparazzi pay for, but I don't know if in this case she got money, but they usually do. And so those were done. And then Joe Gorga ends up running into, into uh, Joe Judice in the Bahamas. This is where the drama begins today. So first I'm gonna show you the video that started it all. Then I'm gonna quickly show you the receipt that Gia posted. Then I'm gonna tell you a little more gossip. Then we're gonna get into what happened on the show. <laughs> and make sure you watch my video, oh my goodness, from Tuesday. And if you didn't watch the end, you need to go back and watch the end of that video. I'll show you this a picture. is the one you've got to watch because it really is where the breakdown in the relationship with Melissa and Teresa happened and it explains so much about what's happening in the season there's lots of gossip in this video and at the end there's a holy moly thing that came out about Louis Ruelas that I take you through and it's just gonna blow your damn mind so maybe Joe was you know being paid by this law firm to speak and also like do things with them and promote so this them. is Paradise Island, Bahamas. Joe Gorga posted it. See, amazing couple of days with such great couples and just all around great people. You only live once at Berman Law Group. TBT Takeover. So here's the video of Joe Gorga running into Joe J Judice and it's quiet and there's no sound, but I wanted you to see the original video. I'm assuming it was like Atlantis or something because there's not that much to do in Nassau. Um, you know, there's like, I think a club that there are some people that I know are in and it's like fancy, there's that. And then there's like Atlantis and all of that resort and all they have to offer. And then, you know, a few restaurants here and there and that's it. So, I mean, it wasn't surprising if they did fall, you know, fall for each other. <laughs> <laughs> If they did accidentally bump into each other, but the fans weren't buying it, and neither was Teresa Judice's daughter. Gia is like, I'm not buying what you're selling. This is a setup to try to help you with the fans because you're being hated so much this season because people are seeing through some of your lies now. And this was Gia's response. Joe wrote this under that video I just showed you. Both walked into the same bar at the same time. A lot of history there. We have memories since we were kids. I'm happy he's doing well and looks good. We were both happy to see each other and catch up. Glad someone caught it. Life, Real Housewives of New Jersey. Then Gia calls it out 12 minutes later. This is honestly comical knowing you were with him for not even five minutes and were able to have somebody take a video of the interaction. Meanwhile, all you have done is talked so poorly about my father. You are such an opportunist. You are such an opportunist to take advantage of the once in a lifetime opportunity to see my father and use it for a post. And then Joey wrote at Gia, we both said horrible things about each other. It was a nice moment. We have a lot of history. Get the hate out of your heart. Gia has said that, you know, since BravoCon 2022, that she's not having that much communication with Joe Gorga, none with Melissa, just a few text messages with Joe. It's not great. And she's trying to stay in touch with her cousins mainly, but it's tough. And they're really just texting and talking on social media. So, I mean, that's a shame. A shout out to Tracy. Finally, someone who bought a hoodie let me post a picture of them in it. I get sent all these great pictures and then people are too shy to let me post them. But thank you, Tracy. I love you. You're a goddess. And thanks for letting me post it. You look great in the hoodie, baby. Loves it. Loves it. Did you guys see this? 
<laughs> All right, so Bravo puts on their daily dish post. Louis, Louis Ruella shares a major career update. After revealing that he had to step down from his previous position, Louis had exciting news to share on Watch What Happens Live. He's talking, this is about the February 14th appearance that he makes with Teresa. You know the one, Teresa looked hot and he couldn't play any of the games. He couldn't, like it was too complicated. <laughs> anyway, he's got a new job and gee, it's gonna sound familiar to you. <laughs> Hold on, let me show you something. I started a new company, Teresa's husband of six months said. It's in media, digital media. Host Andy Cohen then asked Louie to elaborate on the nature of his new business and the Bronx native said he does, quote, lead generation ad sales. Jen Shaw. In addition to the new job, Louie took another major life step recently, marrying Teresa. Now you guys already know from watching my channel that the FTC has been investigating some of these companies surrounding digital media solution. And there's a lawsuit that some consumers took against DMS for, you know, giving them kind of misleading promises about what the hell was happening, okay? And so they thought they were like buying directly from a vendor or something, but in actuality, it was just a bunch of websites taking information, leading them through portal to portal to get leads to then send to other people that would fulfill them. And so it was very, yeah. It was, uh, it's a hustle. What can I tell you? I mean, that's what it is. And that's why they're suing. So anyway, um, yeah. So it sounds like he's starting a new company that does a similar thing. All right, let's get into the recap of episode three. So, you know, we start off and what you're getting the feeling of is that the Gorga family is on one side and they are like in disbelief that Teresa has just thrown a bone to Melissa Gorga and offered her to be in the wedding and Melissa Gorga turns it down. And there's this tug of war of like, Teresa's trying to show, you know, save face and Melissa's done with doing it that way. She doesn't want to save face anymore. And on the one hand, you've got Joe Gorga's mom-in-law and sister-in-law, you know, on his side with Melissa. And on the other side, you've got Teresa, her daughter, Gabriella and Gia and Louis Ruelas. So the bottom line is Gabriella and Gia do not feel that Joe and Melissa Gorga were there for them when Teresa went to prison and only they felt came over when the cameras were rolling for the show. Melissa says this is an absolute lie and she can't believe that they're saying that. Okay. Meanwhile, Louis Ruelas is like those people are Gorgas are liars and they're terrible and, you know, he's egging Teresa on and Teresa's embracing all of this negative energy and like loves it because it's proving her point that like they shouldn't be in the wedding and all this stuff that she said and she's just trying to save face the Italian way. Now, meanwhile, the Gorgas feel like they've been there for the kids and it's an absolute lie that they weren't, the kids aren't remembering things properly. They're hurt deeply. Um, Melissa feels like Teresa's selfish in even involving the kids in these kinds of conversations because the Gorgas don't. They actually made their kids leave the table when they started to talk about Teresa and the wedding with uh, Melissa's sister and mother. So they have a very different view on how you deal with, you know, family issues like this and they don't want to involve the children. So the Gorga's position is that Teresa has been for years abusing them, doesn't really want them in their lives, would prefer to have like a whole new life with Louis Ruelas's family and Melissa's done with it. She just doesn't want to pretend anymore. And that's her position. Margaret in the previous episode calls Jennifer Aiden unable to do introspection. And so Jennifer Aiden says to Bill Aiden, hey, do you think I lack this? 
And Bill's like, well, you might. Everybody has a part in a fight. And, Je and Jennifer is like, screw you. Why don't you ever have my back? You'd never support me. And I just want you to blindly support me. And Bill, you just don't do it. And Bill looks like a beat up guy who's sick of his wife. And that's kind of the take we get out of watching them interact. So the scene where Gia, Louie, Gabriella, and Teresa are talking about the Gorgas also was kind of weird for another reason than the fact that she's talking to the kids about it. It was also weird because she was supposedly in like a meditation with Buddha and all this stuff, like the most peaceful setting. And they decide to have this be the setting that they're going to have this conversation in that's so negative. And I just felt like that felt a little prearranged. I would also like to note that Louis Ruelas is wearing Psycho Bunny clothing in the scenes in tonight's episode. How appropriate. <laughs> There's a really great subplot that happens with Danielle Cabral. We learn about her brother not speaking to her. They have a a war over Instagram where she does these silly videos. He makes fun of it, hurts her feelings. She blocks him. He thinks that she's like really being a jerk to him, compounded with the fact that she's kind of aggressive to his new wife about their wedding. He feels like she's in his shit a little bit. And so he cuts her off. And then she kind of goes with the cutoff and lashes back and they become estranged. Also, Danielle's mom is estranged from her brother too. This devastates the father. He starts crying on the show, wishing the whole family would be back together Danielle again. Danielle starts crying and she genuinely seems to want to be, you know, have her family reunited, but doesn't know how to do it. And so she's like telling Melissa Gorga, do whatever you have to to get Joe Gorga and Teresa back together because if this doesn't mend, it's devastating to a family. I really enjoyed seeing this part of Danielle's story. I thought it was not boring. I thought it was a really great addition to the night's, tonight's episode. And I thought it was genuine. It was like, to me, I can tell when it's BS, right? I can tell when the producers are producing. This was so... Well, like the part where the family actually is reacting about the brother and sister not talking anymore was so authentic and awesome. And I'm like, okay, TV gold, because it was real. It was definitely real. There are two other subplots in episode three. One is that Jackie Goldschneider is pissed at Danielle for not inviting her to her mozzarella party. And Danielle has criticized her clothing. She thinks she dresses cheapy. And, you know, and Melissa's like, well, don't be surprised as to why, you know, she didn't invite you to the mozzarella party. You don't like her outfits. And Jackie, anyway, at some point she goes to lunch with Margaret and Melissa and they basically talk about how she wasn't at the mozzarella party. I mean, you know, they also talk about that they think Jennifer Aiden's marriage is falling apart and she's not happy with him at home and it's coming across in the way that she's behaving on the show. And then, uh, you know, Jackie drags um, Danielle's clothing and she comes off really like she's pulling at threads. She you know, doesn't she's... have a lot to work with. And I do think that the real jealousy between Jackie and Danielle is the, the friend of position because what I think they probably said to Jackie behind the scenes is if you really bring it this season we'll make you a housewife again and Danielle will be out so they pit Danielle and Jackie against each other for the housewives role and and Jackie ultimately lost to Danielle so that is creating the tension really between them I don't think Jackie really gives a crap about what Danielle dresses like she just didn't have anything else to work with she didn't do the deep dive she should have done that before the show. With Fuda, we just find out that she wants to have another baby, that she had a miscarriage that was very emotional for her. She then did IUD. She then had her daughter and her other baby, and she's thrilled. And that was a really meaningful thing. And she loves to take pictures of her kids so that we learn that about Rachel. 
Danielle shares that she has a clothing company that's over the top for kids called Bougie Kids. And we learn about that a little bit. That's another thing that happens on this episode. So then we see the boys go out for a night out together. And it's like everybody is there. Huge group of men now. And Joe tells his friends, listen, I've had it with Louis Ruelas. He doesn't have our back. She's gotten worse since she's been around him. You know, he says one thing, does another. He called my wife insecure. I, he's a piece of crap. He really did like, he lets it out in one moment where he calls him like crap and this and that. I'll see if I can play it for you. But you can tell like, that's what he really thinks. Like he pulls it back for the show in the scene, but what he really feels is what he first says. And then... Um, uh, it turns out Bill Aiden has become friends with Louis Ruelas. In fact, Louis had his arm around him, like the whole scene. And I was, it made me like very uncomfortable. I'm like, why is he like hugging Bill the entire scene? Like, does. I'm like, are they dating? Like what's happening here? Anyway, um, it was just a little too, you know, when someone is like too touchy feely, I'm sure it was like, it was like he was holding on to him like a life raft. That's all I was like, to describe it to you. So um, anyway, Joe says to Louis, you know, I'm angry. I'm holding you responsible for the fact that Teresa didn't invite Melissa or in-laws uh, or her mom and sister to the wedding. Shame on you. How can you not make Teresa do it? He's like, I asked her. She said no. At first, Louis stands up to Joe Gorga and really seems like he's going to, you know, calls him on his, his theatrical shit and everything. He's kind of winning the fight. But then he backs down and I think he backs down because he realized he was kind of going against his spiritual image. Like he had a check, like I better so go back to that. he tries to calm Joe down at this point. It doesn't escalate. Joe is like, you know, I don't know if I want to talk to my sister anymore. Louis's like, you guys should try to make amends. And Joe's like, I don't really want to. But meanwhile, Louis's throwing petrol on the fire so it's all kind of BS, right? And Bill Aiden is sticking up more for Louis Ruelas than he does for Jennifer Aiden. Frank is upset because Dolores and him aren't talking anymore. Polly is her whole world. She's never home. She doesn't talk really to Frank much anymore. And Frank is missing his friendship with Dolores. But he also knows he can't be selfish and he needs to let her be happy now. And so he steps aside for Polly, but they're not getting along and he's not sure how they're going to make it work. And we also touch on the fact that he's like lost his balls or something and he has a ball incident and he has to have a ball removed or something. Anyway, they, they make fun of it. Like, wow, hard crowd. I don't know. <laughs> I felt bad for Frank. I was like, poor guy. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> Joe and Frank are, you know, are besties, so... There's nothing coming between them. Okay, so now I'm going to take you through some of the final scene, and we're going to talk about it, and then uh, that's it. That, then we'll end it. Yeah. I'll tell you, when Louie came around, we took him in with open arms. My wife, who's mission secure, treated him better than royalty. But then I just found out my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law, they're not invited to the wedding. See, so Joe is using this as the catalyst to really piss him off more than Melissa. You guys have a lot of unresolved issues, though. I'm just like, what is happening? I just want them to know you're a piece of shit, you're garbage. That, what Joe says right there, is what he really means. That is like how he feels about Louis Ruelas, really. <laughs> you have a bachelor party. Yeah. Who are you going to invite? Why are you asking? I'm asking because you guys are having a wedding, right? You're inviting a lot of people? A few? 200 close people? What does that have to do with anything? I'm just asking you a question. Yeah, it's 200 people. It's 200 people. Two close zero, people. Zero. Yeah, close people, friends. You met Melissa's family, right? Good people? Great people. Really? Right? Yeah. Okay, Joe, where are you going with this, buddy? <laughs> I just found out Melissa's family, they're not invited to a wedding. It's up. Um, it's a lot of past bullshit. No matter what happened between Melissa and Teresa, Melissa's family, the way they treated my parents, 
You got to give them respect. This was a stretch, everybody. I mean, obviously, if Melissa Gorga and Joe aren't invited, then neither would be Melissa's mom or sister, right? And so I, I think that Joe and Melissa were really trying to find a grounds outside of themselves to attack Louie and Ter- Teresa for the show. And they, this was all they could come up with. Again, when you do that, it's, it's hard, you know? So Joe is making a lot of noise so that you don't really think about the story too much because it doesn't make a lot of sense. So he's like, well, it fans won't really remember what the hell the even argument is about if I bang tables and stuff like that. <laughs> They'll just remember that. My wife's not in the f***ing wedding. You, her family's not in the wedding. Then, Joe, 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 Joe. You just kind of backpedal. Could you tell me to give me a second? Okay, so here's the backpedal. Joe actually says it, um, that that Louie does, because it gets, like, to a climax. I can't show, obviously, the whole clip, but... You know, here there's a climax. There's a lot of build up. This fight goes on for a good, I don't know, six, seven minutes. I'm only showing you like you know, a few seconds here and there. And uh, so he seems like, you know, he's coming for Joe and Joe calls him a wuss. I mean, not using his language. He went way worse. And Louis just like, calm it down, you know, so. But Louis did cave in the end because he's trying to keep peace, I guess, with the boys. Guys. Teresa's my fiance. Teresa, at 50 years old, puts her foot down, says who she wants to have at the wedding. She doesn't want certain people at the wedding. Okay, what do you what do you think I should do? A man should tell my sister, give that a line. So I did just that. Your sister wanted to stand her ground. That sword should not fall on me because. Too late, Louis. Too late. <laughs> the sword has fallen right into you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Anyway, who's lying here, guys? Like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Fame and family don't go together. God, this show has destroyed the Gorgas and Teresa's family in terms of their relationships. My goodness, I hope it was all worth it. What do you guys think about all this? You know, there's a lot of things to argue. Let's argue in the comments about it. Why not? Just for fun. Like Andy said, I think recently on an interview, this is no guilt judginess. I'm going to get into that in that in a video I'm dropping soon. And I'm going to drag Andy a little because he deserves it just a little bit. <laughs>